Let us start our lecture today. All right, so last time, last time we were trying to prove that the inner product of P and L, PM is different from zero, which means that they are not orthogonal. So in order to prove that the inner product is not zero, what we want to prove is that you want to show that, so this is basically the, uh, so you want to prove that when you multiply P and PM and you integrate them, you don't get zero. So as, uh, in the last time, we were trying to prove that, and this um, uh, uh, leads to the proof that this integral is different from zero, all right? So the whole class last time uh, was trying to compute the first term. So the first term was something like this, all right? By a similar method, you can show that the second term can also uh, be written in a different, uh, in a similar way. So basically, the this is the the second term, right? Minus one dividing by one half plus two m square over n plus m square pi square. All right, so. So by a similar method, you can compute a second term. And, and this is clear that the, uh, the sum of the first term and the second term is different from zero. So I explain again. So in the, in the first class, we were trying to prove that Pn and Pm, they're not orthogonal. So in order to prove that they're not orthogonal, you multiply them and you integrate them, right? So in the previous class, we know that when you multiply Pn and Pm and you integrate them, you're gonna get this uh, so, with this difference, all right? So this is basically basically Pn times Pn in a product, all right? So so the whole, in the whole class uh, last time, we were computing the first term. The first term is this one, all right? And similarly, you can also compute the second term by the same method, and and I don't compute that. But by the same method, you can have similar result. So now, if you take the sum of the first and the second term, they're going to be different from zero. Because the first term contains the difference between n and m, and the second term is the product, uh, is a function of n plus m. All right? So, conclusion. Pn and Pm are not orthogonal. All right. So uh, let me recall uh, what is the uh, uh, form of Pn and Pm. Um, so in this case, um, Pn plus lambda uh, plus 2 pn prime plus lambda and pn is equal to 0 um, pn at 0 is 0 and pn at l is 0 so the, in the previous class we computed pn and this is what this is exponential of minus x sinus of n pi x over l and lambda n will be uh, 1 plus n pi over l squared. Alright? So I explain again. In the previous class, we were trying to solve these eigenvalue problems. Alright? So you have phi n second plus 2 phi n plus lambda n phi n is 0 with 0 the Richter boundary condition at 0 and l. Alright? So what we found is that the eigenvalue will be 1 plus n pi over m squared. And the eigenfunction will be exponential of minus x sinus of n pi x over l, right? But in the previous class, we can prove that pn and pm are not orthogonal. Why? Because when you multiply pn and pm, you take the integral of them, you're going to have a difference between these two terms. So in the previous class, we computed the first term, and this is basically uh, the the form of the first term. The second term, I won't compute that, but it's gonna give you similar result. 
in which n minus m is repla replaced by n plus m, right? Now, when you subtract these two terms, they are different from zero, which means that the inner product of Pn and Pm is different from zero. In other words, Pn and Pm are not orthogonal, all right? So because Pn and Pm are not orthogonal, they don't form, <coughs> so P1, P2, Pn, uh, this is Pn, right? Um, it's not an orthogonal basis. Basis of the solution, the space of solution. Right? So we cannot expand, we cannot expand, we cannot expand the soft term f s f is the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of f n p n in which f n will be f p n divided by p n p n all right so this formulation doesn't work so i explain again so in, the, so, so in the previous class, you have this eigenvalue problem. You found that Pn has this form, and uh, lambda n has this form, and Pn has this form, right? So in order to use steps two, you need that those P1, P2, Pn is an orthogonal uh, basis of the solution space, right? But when you check the inner product of Pn and Pm, you get this horrible uh, difference between the two terms, and we did a lot of computation, and you found that uh, we found the first term has this form, a similar computation can give you the second term, that I don't show you, but you can do by repeating the first uh, the argument that you use to compute the first term. So the difference between the two terms is not zero. In other words, phi n and phi m are not orthogonal. So, in general, you don't have an orthogonal basis, and therefore, you cannot expand F uh, using this basis, all right? So this formula is not working. Uh, so this is why we try uh, to solve this equation without going to step two. But we need an extra uh, work on this. So the reason The reason the operator L, which is L U is U second plus two U prime, uh, and U zero is zero, U L is zero, is not self adjoint. All right. So the whole theory, the whole theory is um, only works when the operator is self choice In other words, uh, so I, I recall to you the following things. Uh, so so this operator is is uh, is said to be self choice if so you have m u times b. So let me uh, l is self choice when for uh, L u is u prime plus two u prime u zero is zero u l is zero and L v is v second plus two v prime v at zero is zero and v at l is also zero. We have uh, the integral from 0 to L of L u v dx is equal to the integral from 0 to L of L v u dx. All right? So, so, so the reason 
that PN and PM are not orthogonal is that this operator is not several choice. Right? So I recall definition of several choice in the following way. So I have LU is U second plus 2U prime. Right? So which is exactly this operator. I have the same boundary condition. At 0, you have 0. And at L, you have 0. Right? So LB is also V second plus 2 bit prime and F0, V0 is 0, at L, um, L uh, V of L is 0. So it is self choice if you integrate from 0 to L of LUV dx, then you also get the integral from 0 to L of LV U dx. It's clear? But in this case, in this case, In our case, in our case, um, the inner product of L U and V is different from the inner product of L V and U. So which means that in it, the integral from zero to L of U second plus two U prime V dx is equal to in, is different from the interval from 0 to L of V second plus 2 V prime U dx. All right? So in our case, the operator is not self choice which means that uh, the interval from 0 to L of L U V dx is different from the interval from uh, 0 to L of L V U dx, which means that the interval from 0 to L of U second plus 2 U prime V dx is different from the interval from 0 to L of V second plus 2V prime U dx. Right? So check this is an exercise for you. Ah, so L is not self -assured. Right, so so you can check this is uh, that this is not a several choice operator using this the classical techniques that I mentioned in the previous class about checking several choice. So you just take integration by path twice, right? So this is integration by path twice. All right, it's clear. So I explain again. In the previous class, we checked that phi n and phi m, they are not orthogonal. The reason that they are not, they are not orthogonal is that this operator L is not self choice right? So I recall definition of self choice So I have an operator L, I have the boundary condition. So an, op an operator which is self not self choice means that um, you have LU times V dx is different for, uh, is equal to, uh, to, to LV times U dx, all right? So in which U and V have to satisfy the same boundary condition. So this is the important thing. So you have to have U and V satisfy the same boundary condition. So, so basically, you can check by doing integration by path that uh, the inner product of L U and V is different from the inner product of L V and U, right? Um, so this is equivalent to the fact that u second plus 2u prime in a product with v is different from v second plus 2v prime in a product with u. But the point is that you have to have uh, the same boundary condition, right? So, so now the conclusion of everything will be the following. Uh, so if L is not self choice We don't have an, orth orth uh, an orthogonal basis. Right, so we need a new tool to overcome this difficulty. Right? Questions? It's clear. So, yes? Um, are, are those the same? So, are they the boundary conditions? Are they both U of 0 and U of L, or is the one right B? So, so, the boundary condition for U is U at 0 and U at L. They're both 0. The boundary condition for V is V at 0 
and V at L, that both is zero, right? So they have to be uh, the same boundary condition. Other questions? Right, so the whole idea of chapter three is to construct a new theory to overcome this difficulty, all right? So what should we do in the case when we don't have self adjoinance and, and, uh, and the idea of chapter three is, is very simple, which is the following. So I'm gonna try to be consistent. Right. So, so consider. to u prime with the boundary condition u at 0 is 0 and u at l is 0 all right so i recall you that the operator recall the operator the term involving u in the equation right so so you have u second plus 2 u prime plus f is 0 um, and you have u at 0 is 0 and u at l is 0 uh, so this is on 0 to L. So this is the operator. All right, so, so now I'm going to, uh, so I call the term that contains U in the equation, the operator. All right, so it's, it's more fancy, but it's just the term that has U. So first, uh, the equation that we are looking at is U second plus 2 U prime plus F is 0. So this is, so the, the, the U second plus 2 U prime is the operator because it has u. And f is, f is what? The force of the shock term, right? Shock term. So the force of the shock term is the term that doesn't contain u, all right? So in this case, we have this operator with the boundary condition. So the boundary condition of the operator will be also the boundary condition of the equation, right? So we know that this operator is not self-adjoint. All right, so, so we, um, we know that L is not self-adjoint is not self-adjoint. Right? So which means that Pn and Pm is not a polynomial. Right? It's clear. So we know that in this case, you don't have self-adjoint which means that all of the eigenvalues, uh, eigenvectors, uh, they're not orthogonal. Right? So then this introduced the idea of weighted space. Of weighted space. Alright? So so we're gonna we're gonna consider we consider we consider a new uh, inner product. <coughs> All right, so the, the, the previous inner product is the following. Previous inner product. So you have Pn and Pm is the integral from zero to L of e to power minus x times of n pi x over L times exponential minus x sinus of m pi x over L the x, and this is different from zero, right? So in the previous inner product, you have the inner product of two function f and g is the integral from zero to l of lx, gx, dx. 
right? So I explain again. So the reason why the previous method doesn't work is that with this classical in a, in a product, with this classical in a product, you don't have orthogonality, right? So you multiply the first eigenvalue and the second eigenvalue, and it won't give you zero. So this comes the, the ideas of weighted in the product. So this in the, uh, this idea belongs to Stum and Luby. Uh, so this belongs to Stum and Luby. Right, so this is a genius idea in which you change the inner product so that you have orthogonality. So, um, stum, stum and Liobi propose the idea of changing the inner product to get a commonality. So, so, so idea that we need to find a new inner product, inner product, Uh, F and G W such that P N P M W is zero, right? So, so does so we as um, so uh, the, we are struggle with the inner product. So this the classical inner product doesn't give you zero. So which means that P N and P M are not orthogonal in the classical in the product, all right? So then, uh, Sturm and Lubin come up with a very genius idea in which he said that, okay, in, in order to get orthogonality, you just have to change the inner, inner product, right? So who can guess the inner product? Yes? And then another basis where the vectors are um, orthogonal to... No, the idea is you keep the same basis, but you change the inner product so that you still have orthogonality. So the idea is the following. So we define, um, we define, we find a function w such that if we denote if we define f and g w to be the integral from 0 to l of w x f and g x dx, then integral of then pn and pm w is, uh, is 0. So, so his idea is to put a function into the into the, uh, the inner product, right? So the the first the classical inner product is corresponding to the case where w is one. So the classical inner product inner product corresponds to the case when w is one, right? So f of g of one will be 0 to L, 1 times fx, times gx, dx, and this is e. All right? So, so the, the idea is very simple. You multiply the, the classical inner product with a weight, w. So this is the so-called weighted space, weighted inner product. All right? So, um, so when so the idea is when you multiply this way into the classical inner product, you're gonna have a tonality, right? So now what 
what way should we choose? W is equal to the integral from 0 to a half f x, exponential of minus x, sinus of n pi x over l, sinus of m pi x over l dx, right? So this is wx, exponential of minus 2x, sinus of n pi x over l, sinus of m pi x over l. So what way should we choose so that this is this uh, integral is zero? What way should we choose? Either the two x. What? Either the two x. Excellent. Can you sign the back of this? This is the perfect answer, right? So. So we know from the previous lecture that we know that sinus n pi x over l, sinus of m pi x over l, the x is zero. This is because one sinus of n pi x over l, cosinus of and pi x over l <coughs> is the poor basis. All right, so we check this already. We check this on page. Uh, uh, which page is it? This is. Uh, which. Um, we check that in, in the Fourier series uh, lecture, right? So I explain again. So in the Fourier series lecture, we know that sinus of n and sinus of uh, sinus of n pi x over l and sinus of n pi x over l dx. When you multiply them, you integrate them; they are zero. The reason is this is the the, the elements of uh, the Fourier basis, right? So all of the elements of the Fourier basis are orthogonal. <coughs> so, so. So in this new weighted inner product, what you have is you multiply a function w with phi n. So this is phi n, right? And this is phi n. We put exponential of x together to get exponential of minus 2x. So the leftover is sinus nx and sinus mx. We know that without this whole thing, sinus nx and sinus mx, they are orthogonal. So we choose w of x to be exponential of 2x, right? So then phi n, phi m will be uh, exponential of 2x, exponential of minus 2x, sinus of n pi x over l, sinus of m pi x over l. Right? And this is going to give you integral from 0 to L of sinus of n pi x over L, sinus of m pi x over L, dx, and this is 0. So you define a new weighted space, uh, a, a new weighted uh, basis, uh, a new weighted inner product, so that when you multiply them, uh, the basis with this weighted with this new inner product, the the uh, uh, the p n and p m they are orthogonal. It's clear. So you understand the definition of the new inner product. So basically, um, so in the lecture note you see that there, so there are a lot of uh, 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 linear algebra and things like that. But the idea is just this, right? So we are on a page uh, sixty-eight. So I'm gonna show you in a minute how you choose uh, W. How the lecture notes. So we, we go over a lot of pages in the lecture notes to this key idea, right? So this, 
So all of those 10 pages is as simple as this. So again, in this case, you don't have an auto join operator, which means that PN and PM, they are not orthogonal in the, in, in, in the, the kind of classical inner product, right? So the idea now is to find a new inner product so that they are orthogonal. So yeah, so, so the, the genius idea of Sturm and Lubin is to multiply the classical inner product with the weight, right? So this is the weight, which is a function. So the weight is just a function. So, so what I suggest is to multiply uh, the inner product with a new function, which is called weight. So that when in this new inner product, uh, Pn and Pm are orthogonal, right? So the classical inner product corresponds to the case where W is equal to one, right? So uh, uh, then you, uh, so, so in the classical inner product, so you have W, uh, so the inner product of F and G, one is one times F times G, and this is nothing but F times G, the X and you integrate from zero to L, right? So now the point is to find a W, such that Pn and Pm, they are orthogonal. So then I'm gonna multiply Pn and Pm and integrate. Uh, I'm, uh, so I multiply Pn and Pm, so this is Pn and this is Pn, and I multiply that with the weight W. So that when I multiply with this weight, this is going to be zero. So now I arrange the term. I put e to the minus x and e to power minus x to get e to power minus two x. And this up here is here. So I have sinus here and sinus C, right? So we know that the inner product of sinus and sinus is zero because they are full basis, right? So the full, so so we know from the previous lecture that uh, one sinus cos sinus, this is the full basis, which means that if you take the inner product of sinus and sinus m, this should be zero, right? Which means that you have to choose this to be one. So what I do is I choose w to be e to power 2x and, uh, and, and then um, when I multiply e to the 2x, I replace e to the 2x here and e to the 2x, e to the minus 2x and I get one, which means that the inner product is, is zero, right? So this is the whole idea of stump looping theory. Questions? Screen? Right, so, so the point is that how can we uh, know W in advance without having to compute the eigenfunctions and eigenvalue? All right? So let us look back in, uh, to the form of the operator. Um, so how do we choose W in advance? How do we choose W? Uh, so, let, so before uh, learning about how to choose W, let, it, let us try to uh, write out the, the channel process, how to solve this equation first. So I have this equation, right? So U prime plus F is zero on zero and L, right? I have u at zero is zero, and u at L is zero, right? So step number one, solve the eigenvalue problem. So this is summarized. Summary. I can make you problem. Um, you have Pn second plus two, Pn prime plus f is zero. Right? Uh, and Pn is zero, is zero. Pn and L is 
zero, right? Now, what I do is the, uh, so we found Pn is e to the power minus x sine s of n pi x over l, and lambda n will be uh, one, plus, 1 plus n pi over l squared. <coughs> right? So, step number two, l of u is u prime plus 2u uh, and u at 0 is 0, u at l is not self adjoint. So step two. So then, then, so this is the summaries of the uh, the process how to solve this equation. All right. So you have this equation: u second plus two u prime plus f is equal to zero on zero l. u at zero is zero. u at l is zero. The first step: you solve this eigenvalue problem. Right? You find this eigen function and this eigen value. You check that this is not self adjoint. So this is exercise, right? Exercise. Which means that Pn and Pm are, top, are not orthogonal. Pn, Pm are not orthogonal. So in this case, just you have to remember that n and m have to be different, right? So you cannot have an, a, ve a vector orthogonal to itself. So n and m has to be different. So because this operator is not self adjoint then phi n and phi m is different from zero, and n and has to be different from m, right? So we introduce, introduce a new inner product, inner product, Such that, uh, such that, P n and P m are orthogonal. Orthogonal in this inner product. Inner product. So we choose W is exponential to x. Right? Uh, and then the inner product of two functions fx, so the inner product of fx and gx in this weighted inner product will be the integral from 0 to L of wx, fx, gx. Right? So, and this is the integral from 0 to L of exponential of 2x, fx, gx, dx. Right? So this operator is not self adjoint. What we do is to introduce a new inner product so that so that phi n and phi m are orthogonal with respect to this inner product. And the W that we choose is exponential of 2x, right? So the inner product will be the integral from 0 to m L of f times g multiplied with this weight, which is exponential 2x. Right? So now phi n and phi m. <coughs> With this inner product, will be exponential of 2x e to the power, power minus x sine s of n pi x over l e to the power minus x sine s of m pi x over l dx. And this is going to be integral from 0 to l of sine s n pi x over l sine s of m pi x over l. Zero, right? So if you have this inner product, you multiply e to the two x to phi n and phi m. So all of the exponential go away. You have only uh, sin s and sin s m, and this is zero according to the previous lecture, right? So now because you have a new inner product which is orthogonal. 
so, uh, so then you can expand mx will be the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of fn, fn of x, in which fn will be um, f times fn with this weight, right? So you're going to use exactly the same formula with this weight. So then I'm going to have this is, you know, from 0 to l of e to the 2x, mx, uh, e to power minus x, sin s of, sin s of n, pi x of l, dx, right? So this gives me the interval from 0 to l of e to the x, fx, sin s of n pi x of l, right? Uh, so, so first you, you have this one and you have pn, pn, will be integral from 0 to L of e to the 2x of sinus of e to the x minus x sinus of n pi x of L square the x and this is integral from 0 to L of sinus of n pi x of L square the x alright so fn will be f times phi n w dividing by phi n phi n w right so it's exactly the same process but uh, but fn is f times phi in this new inner product and dividing by phi n phi n in this new inner product so in the previous method in the previous case w is not there right um, so let me explain again. Um, so after you define this new inner product, right? After you define this new inner product, you have phi n times phi m in this new inner product, which is um, exponential of 2x. So, so you have e to the 2x. This is phi n. This is phi n. <coughs> and this is phi m. Right? So... So in this new inner product, you replace phi n here, you replace phi m here, but you have to put the weight, right? So when you have this weight, all of the exponential will go away, and you have sinus sinus, and this is zero from the previous uh, uh, lecture. So you define a new inner product so that phi n and phi m are formal. Now the same techniques can be applied. So you expand mx in terms of this new basis, right? So mx will be Fn times Fn times Fn. So Fn will be F times Fn with respect to this weight. Divided by Fn, Fn with respect to this weight. Right? So, so, so F times Fn in this uh, inner product with weight will be the interval from 0 to L. So this is W. Right? So this is F and this is Fn. Right, so you have W times F times phi n. So I cancel uh, exponential of 2x and e to the x, and I have e to the x, mx, sinus n pi x over n pi x over L, the x, right? So, so the phi n, phi n is also computed on, uh, in, with respect to this inner product. So I have this is W, and this is phi n squared, right? So I have W here, I have Phi n, phi n, so this is phi n squared, so I have exponential minus x, sinus n pi x over L squared. So this exponential will cancel with this exponential, so I have only sinus squared. Right, so I, we, I think we have a formula for this term, which is something in the previous exercise. Sinus, sinus squared. Mm. I think uh, it is fine. So, so we computed this in one of the previous lectures. Uh, so basically, Fn will be F times Fn, and W divided by Fn, Fn, W, right? And so step three. Step three. 
uh, uh, view end will be the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of u n phi n and u, uh, u and u n will be f n dividing by lambda n which means that this is f n dividing by 1 plus uh, n pi of l square yes all right so so you you use exactly the same method so you have u will be the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of u n phi n which is the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of u n exponential minus x sinus of n pi x of l right uh, and u n can be computed similar uh, in a similar way that we use in the case of several joint right so you have m n divided by lambda n, the lambda n which is m n divided by 1 plus n pi over l squared. Questions? So the difference between the Salvatore case and the non Salvatore case is that in the Salvatore case, you don't have to introduce the weight. In the, the non Salvatore case, you have to introduce the, the weight. So that phi n and phi m are orthogonal. So even, even if you don't check Salvatore, you multiply phi n and phi m, you see that they are not orthogonal. So, so you know that this is not self joint, and so you introduce the weight, so that they are orthogonal, right? Questions? Yes. So, like the only step that so if the there's not self joint, the only step that really changes is step two. Yes. The only step that is changing is step two. You introduce the weight, okay. right? So, so, um, so. When this is several joint, there is no weight. <coughs> and uh, and non several joint, um, so we need to find a weight. W. So this is the only difference between that Salvatore case and a non Salvatore case, right? Question? So you see that there, in the lecture notes, there are 10 pages of explaining, and they are just to explain this simple idea, right? Now, I'm going to show you how we pick up this uh, W. So, so I'm going to tell you in one word, and we're going to continue next time. So, if, so even if you don't com compute phi n, how do you choose w? So, so you look into phi u second plus two u prime, and this is l u, right? So you're gonna choose w such that w prime over w is two. This is the idea, right? So this is the operator. You have u second plus two u prime, and so you're gonna choose a way such that u prime over w, uh, w prime over w is two, which is the constant in front of uh, u prime, right? So, so in our case, you have w is e to the two x, so w prime will be two times e to the two x. So you, you, you divide w prime and w, you get two e to the two x divided by e to the two x, and you get two. And I'm gonna explain to you why this is the case why can't we choose W this way, right? So even, even if I give you an operator, an equation, you don't have to compute uh, the eigenvalue and the eigenfunctions. You, all, you always know the weight. Because you look into the constant, you find W such that W prime over W is two. So you, you try to find a function that satisfies this equation. And in, the, in our case, this is exponential of two x. So I'm going to expand to you in, next, uh, in the next class why this is working this way.